Tuesday. Hater and I started in a taxi at 11 p.m. Met Lala on the Norwegian wharf. No food or coffee being obtainable, H and I turned in early. But owing to the stuffiness of the night, and a heated argument as to the respective lengths of our berths, we did not get to sleep before 2 a.m. Wednesday. Breakfast, 9 a.m. Very poor coffee. In the morning, when quite comfortably ensconced on the deck reading Three in Norway, was called to prescribe for a lady with mal de mer. Retired precipitately to make up medicines, and for other reasons. Hater too succumbed. Few appeared for lunch and fewer for dinner, of which H and I partook with caution, Gruyere being substituted for Gorgonzola, etc. Four cases of Baldemere and one of appendicitis. Thursday, 7 a.m. Stavanger called, which I inspected through the porthole. H could not be roused even to do this. Water from overflow pipe of bath two inches deep under my bed, and one inch deep in the medicine chest. Half bandages and half lint had to be thrown away spoilt. Bright sunshine after breakfast. 4.30 p.m. Landed appendicitis stewardess after consultation with Dr. Hanser, a brother of the Norwegian doctor who discovered leprobacillus. H did not feel inclined to drive to Fantoft Church, so L and I, after inspecting Strangarda, found a carriage with a hood and leisurely avoided the ruck of twenty or thirty Stolkiera, carrying our party. Beautiful view of the lake from the church, which is quite like a pagoda. Return drive past the old cemetery. How carefully the graves attended. Roses, begonias, lobelia, and without a weed. Just like a flower garden. Each grave eighteen inches or so above the surrounding grass, with stone borders. In consequence of mistaking a Norwegian nine for eight, we arrived an hour late for dinner in a restaurant, Café Grand, opposite the Norge Hotel. L, on the strength of his deposit book, cashed a cheque at Cook's for twenty pounds, much to his surprise. Because it was raining, we returned to the boat. But they were hosing the deck, and turned the hose onto the gangway just as we were intending to cross it. Sat for about half an hour on a wet seat, and watched a drunken Norwegian sailor going through much dumb play on a seat opposite us, to an empty bottle. I only saw one other man worse for drink on this tour. 11 p.m. left Bergen. Friday. Breakfast at Oda, Hardanger, which is quite spoiled by carbide works. A long drive, but well worth while, along a lake to Latifus, in a Stolkiera with L. I succeeded in putting my foot through my oilskin coat and placed it hors de combat. Waterfalls galore. The Boerbrai glacier across the lake. A driver upset two Scotch ladies on the level. The daughter's fall was broken by falling on her mother. Being Scotch, they made light of it. The mother, the lady with the hat, was never seen without it on her head, and, presumably, as Miss Baxter said, slept in it. With intermittent cold showers, we steamed down the Hardanger to Norheimsmund. It was this part of the journey that L became acquainted with Miss B. After dinner, we landed at 8 p.m. L bore me company, and remarked that a lady in a cerise sweater coat seemed disappointed that he was with me and did not take her ashore, and hurriedly sought her mother to do so. We went to a waterfall and took shelter after paying thirty ora on a seat underneath it, from heavy rain. We then climbed above it to find oak fern in luxuriance everywhere. Saturday, after touching at Bergen, 7 a.m., I was still abed, we steamed round to Songofjord where were numerous cruisers, battleships, gunboats, and motorboats of the Kaiser's fleet. At the head of the fjord we had a splendid view of an arm of the Josta Dalsbrai, though rather obscured by the smoke of a German battleship, second class. In the afternoon we saw the Hollenzerner Kaiser depart. News of war between Austria and Servia had just arrived. We dined, and again elbow me company but for the last time on an evening expedition, 
a little way along the fjord, where we sat watching the German cruisers gun and gunboats preparing for their departure.